What up all my most valuable poets and welcome back to my channel. Poets, thank you so much for your response and your farewells on why I stopped some of my poetry services. I've been getting a lot of different things done. I do have some things in the works for YouTube in the month of April. So if you aren't subscribed and you haven't clicked on that notification bell, do so so you can stay in the loop. Uh, I, what I wanted to do, I wanted to show you some of my books as a disclaimer, I had a bunch of other books. I probably had close to 200 books. But when I went to go move into the van to do van life, sadly, I had to cull a bunch of my books. So, and I did it responsibly, so I gave it to libraries, to different bookshare places, a bunch to my students and a bunch to my friends. And I stood with maybe about 20. Since then, I've been building up my collection and I've been building up my collection simply by finding them through requests, finding them through friends, um, doing book reviews and, and talking about the books on the channel uh, for some folks. So that's how I've kind of been running into books. I haven't really been buying books. So you'll see how I've got in with these books. I also know that I'm saying books a lot and I am pretty lengthy. I wanted this to be pretty short because my time and your time is precious. So I will be naming the books. I'll be holding the books up. If you want to learn any more about the books besides the links being down below, you can also message me in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you at my convenience. So let's get into it. First, I speak about this book a lot, The Crazy Bunch by Willie Perdomo. This was the best book launch that I've ever been to and I was able to be featured for that book launch. And I'm not saying it just because I was able to go there. The readers were amazing, Willie was amazing, and it was just a vibe. So The Crazy Bunch, I do recommend it. Duende by Tracy K. Smith. Duende is actually something a lot of musicians and poets refer to, and it's kind of like the essence of the blues. And this book basically explores that and it does a really good job doing so. Tracy K. Smith was also a poet laureate of the United States. Shadow Boxing by Joseph Rios from Omnidon Press. I love Omnidon Press and I love the authors that they push out. So this is another one I also recommend. Unaccompanied by Javier Zamora. This is another awesome book that I read uh, during my MFA and I wanted it and I was able to get it. Thank you Rigoberto for gifting me this book. Um, Copper Canyon Press is another really good press. I'll actually name presses as I'm going down. Uh, this is one of those top tier presses for poetry. So definitely look into Copper Canyon books and especially Unaccompanied. We Is by Sammy Miranda is a very dear, great friend of mine. He will also be making an appearance next month. So like I said, make sure that you are staying tuned to that. Another cool thing about this book is that he also did the artwork. So the artwork on the front and the back. He also has artwork inside the books. Ah, there you go. You saw another one. Oliver de la Paz's The Boy in the Labyrinth, which is actually about his son with autism. So The Boy in the Labyrinth is actually dedicated and in part inspiration from the relationship with his son. Thief in the Interior actually won the Kate Tufts Discovery Award in 2017. And not only because of the book that is inside, that, that is hybrid. This is actually a hybrid text. You can see all of the really cool kinds of poetry going on in this book. It's all very free form. But because the cover also matches the artistry that is inside this hybrid text. Ted Hughes's Crow Poems. This was the first book that was gifted to me by my wife when we were still not husband and wife. And this is when I actually was an undergrad and I was applying to an MFA program. Now this book actually feeds into a lot of my mythology, one of which is going to be the premise for my second collection that's going to come out next year called Papi Pichong. So definitely stay tuned for that. Okay, this is Borderland Apocrypha, and this is by Anthony Cody. And this actually won the Amadon Open Award. And since then, I believe it's actually won a Books Critics Circle Award. So I've said this on the channel before, any books that win awards, definitely check them out because they are of some sort of literary and artistic merit that professionals that are work at this says, okay, this book is performing at a certain level. Now that's not saying that all of these books aren't performing at a certain level, but these are the books that are kind of like what we are looking towards in terms of what contemporary literature is. And this is another cool book. Look at the size of this compared to maybe an average looking size book like this. 
So what I really like about literature is how it could come in different forms. And poetry really explores those ways where you can break down different book sizes as well. A Child in Ruins is actually a translation of a famous Portuguese poet by another Portuguese poet friend of mine, Hugo dos Santos, which is also from North New Jersey. This book is Bitter English by Ahmad Almala, and this is from the University of Chicago Press. I am a fan of Shane McRae. Uh, this is Shane McRae's collection that I like the most, The Animal Too Big to Kill. And I was actually gifted this book in my MFA program during a project where the professor in question gave us all books that kind of spoke to what we were writing towards at that moment, or kind of had a similar style. So this was the one that was chosen for me and I still come back to it as I'm writing my own work. Eduardo Corral, who won the Yale Younger Poets Prize several years back. This book is called Slow Lightning. I definitely recommend this book. Everyone needs to have read this book before. This is a book that isn't technically hybrid, but it is tipping what you could do on the page, especially with prose poems. So definitely pick up Slow Lightning, Eduardo Corral. Kingdom Anomalia by Aracelis Germay. This one is from BOA Editions. Uh, I definitely suggest this book if you are a poet, especially a woman poet, queer poet, poet of color, uh, exploring grief and familial ties. This is definitely a really good book for that. Okay, this book is called The Night from Jaime Saenz and this was actually translated from Spanish because this poet is actually from Bolivia by Forrest Gander. So this was one of those books that was just kind of hanging out in my MFA program and I was able to take because I had an extra copy of and Forrest Gander actually came to one of the writer's uh, series at the college. So he left some of these books there. The Wild Night Dress by Laura McCullough. I actually, ha I actually did a reading with this book um, on my channel earlier last month and I actually did a reading with Laura and that's how I received this book. We loved each other's work so much that I gave her one of my artist books and she gave me this book in return. Nicole Seeley's Ordinary Beast. Do you know Nicole Seeley? Do you not know Nicole Seeley? If you don't know, now you know and you need this book. Highly recommend her work. One of my favorite books in my collection, and this is actually a, a book that I bought recently, Brooklyn Antediluvian by Patrick Rosal. Patrick Rosal teaches at Rutgers Camden, um, but that's not why, you know, I'm not, I'm not Rutgers promoting, but just I've listened to Patrick Rosal read and I try to write in the same shadow of the kind of different thematic elements or kind of the mood he sets in his work and a lot of it is storytelling. I actually took a workshop with him and he says he speaks to ghosts a lot. And that is not literal, but that is just figurative to mean that he's speaking throughout histories and he's speaking throughout those whispers of kind of just like experience to really understand your work and the work that you're trying to put out. Roger Reeves' King Me, this is another one of my favorite books. And I've actually turned a lot of my patrons on to Roger Reeves. Um, I featured some of his work in workshops. I have excerpted some of it when I was working with other poets on Patreon. So this is a kind of like a fan favorite amongst my poetry community that I created. Wild Invocations by Isabel Y. Gonzalez. This is one of the Get Fresh books. Um, I have Get Fresh Books as an independent press out of New Jersey, and if you are a writer of color, uh, a writer that is part of a queer community or another disenfranchised group, definitely consider Get Fresh Books. This is a ground up, made from the bootstraps press where the publisher was actually dishing out money for these books until he became a 501c3 and is now actively publishing books and promoting books, thankfully with the help from different grants. Now, about Isabel Y. Gonzalez, she is a Nork poet it. She does really good with the kids and she's really happy. I actually had her at an event last year uh, and she did really well just speaking with the kids and communicating with the kids and it was a really fun time. Two other books that I've also featured on this channel. Uh, this one's by Marina Carrera, Save the Bathwater, and Stand Mute by Victor Alcindor. Two other Get Fresh books. I'll actually leave the Get Fresh books link in the description instead of these three books separately. So you can look at their entire collection. Any one of those books that you get, you will not be sorry. This is like the 
Dimitri Reyes Poet Stamp of Approval. These two books, Elegies and Black Maybe, are both from Roberto Carlos Garcia. Roberto Carlos Garcia is actually the publisher of Get Fresh Books, and he is not only a great publisher, but he is also an amazing, amazing poet, which in this book, Elegies, he even created a poetry form called The Mixtape which is taking a Cento poem and expanding that to also include different things such as essays and song lyrics and excerpts from fiction, a bunch of other things like that. So definitely check out the mixtape form. Definitely check out Elegies. This is from Flower Song Press. Black Maybe talks a lot about the Latinx Afro diaspora, and this is really canon if you're trying to think about the Afro diaspora in terms of talking about uh, Caribbean ancestries and Latino and Hispanic ancestries, as well as trying to chase the caste system throughout the Caribbean. This is a really great book for that kind of stuff. I'm showing doubles. So these two books are from Vincent Toro. This one is Stereo Island Mosaic, and this is from uh, Asata Press, which was the winner of the 2015 Sawtooth Book Prize. Vincent is a very poet. If I, if I could even say that. He is very much a poet in the way his things are just very smart and is very heighty, but it has the sonic quality of like hip hop and new age electronica kind of music. And he is a very musical person, so it's really cool to see what he does on the page. If you see here, the actual book is kaleidoscopic, and that's how you could kind of define Vincent's work. It's very kaleidoscopic and it has a bunch of different scopes which comes here in Tertulia, which is actually uh, a word in Spain for like uh, the way people have political parties where there's talk about politics, there's talk about culture and music. This is actually an advanced reader's copy, so I could do things like I'm doing right now on this channel, doing reviews. A lot of you can get free books if you decide to do reviews, whether if they're written or whether they're like on social media or video. If you are interested in knowing how that happens, you could actually look at this video on different ways to get free poetry. Okay, we're almost done with the stack. Kind. Very interesting thing about this book. My wife and I, when I was first really getting to poetry heavy, we were trying to look for vegan poets and it was one of the most impossible things to find. Then that's when we ran into Kind, which is basically a poetry book about veganism. So we got the book, I reached out to her in an email and said, Gretchen, I love your work. I hope one day we get to meet. And lo and behold, I went to a poetry festival. I got to meet Gretchen Kremack. We went out for a vegan brunch and we became like the best of friends. Um, afterwards, we kept in contact, we kept running into each other at other festivals, and we've even thought about doing some work together. Now, fast forward to 2021, she has a re-release of Kind in hardcover. Now, when things are re-released, that means they're no longer in print with another place or they've exhausted the amount of print runs, whether it was a second or third edition. So it can deem how successful a book is. So this vegan book is very, very successful. And she actually sent this book with a lovely, lovely autograph to me to show in the vegan camaraderie. And now I'm returning that favor by showing you how awesome this book is. So if you are interested in this prettiness of kind, I will also have this in the comment box down below. All right, this book, The Ice Worker Sings and Other Poem by Andres Montoya. Now I'm talking about the Chicanx Poetics, West Coast Latinx literature. I'm on the East Coast, so I'm very influenced by the New Yorican movement, but it's also great to start looking at other categories. This was one of my favorite books in the MFA program, and this was another gift by my mentor, Rigoberto Gonzalez. Prelude to Bruise by Saeed Jones. This was the book that had my guy take off. Saeed Jones is actually an alumni from the Rutgers MFA program, and I was able to meet him. Super cool dude, this is a super cool book. Speaking of super cool dudes, I got another one, The Reinhardt Frames by Chesuayo and Panza. He just won the African Sillerman Prize. Yup, Sillerman First Book Prize for African Writers. This was my guy in my MFA program, and him and another poet, Antonio Lopez, literally helped me get through the program while I was there on campus. This guy is a black intellectual. It's an insane, insane collection, way smarter than me, and I am just very proud of him, and I'm very proud of everything he's been able to accomplish thus far. 
another super cool dude and another mentor of mine, Reggie Gaines. Uh, Reggie Gaines was super big in like the 90s and the early 2000s. Uh, he was a Grand Slam champ, a poet, a Bessie Award winner, a Grammy nominee. Uh, everything just keeps going and going. These days, he is very into theater um, and he's more of a theater coach and a theater practitioner than a poet, but this poem will always be christened as like his first and only legitimate full-length poetry book and so much poetry goes into his artistry now um, as a theater maven and I really appreciate him for all of the work he's actually helped me with in spoken word and recitation and just kind of thinking about how I think about my own artistry. Nathaniel Mackey's Splay Anthem, another one of my favorites that I've got while I was in my MFA program. Carmen Jimenez Smith's B Recorder, which is another cool book. I always tell you to peep the sizes of these books. This book is more square. Authors are very intentional with why books are in certain shapes. Her work actually goes across the page a lot more than some of the other ones I have shown you, and it kind of could even read more prosy sometimes. Lastly, I'll end with one of the most oddly shaped books, and I was just telling you to think about shapes. Uh, this one, Olio by Tahimba Jess, um, he hasn't written a book since Lead Belly uh, in 2004, and, and by the time this book came out, I think it was... Like 2016? Ah, yeah. So, and by the time this book came out, it was already 2016. So during that time, he was researching a bunch of uh, black historians, thinking about personal accounts and kind of researching for this book. So this is the kind of poetry that folks really research for. There could be the poetry of the body, but then there's also the poetry of the intellectual. And Olio is a testament to that. So these are all the actual full lengths I currently own and that collection will keep growing, but these aren't all the books I have. I also have artist books and chat books. I have pedagogy books. I have anthologies and I also have prose and fiction literature. So if you are interested in any of those, let me know in a comment down below and I'll do another video later on with one of those things. So let me ask you, do you have any of these books? Are any of these books books that you are interested in? I can't wait to hear what you gotta say. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell for the National Poetry Month videos. And as always, I will see you all in the next class.